Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome here to the Gentle Hearts Gaming Channel. I am Sandbag, and this time joining me from Game One is going to be the analyst Ferris. Ferris, how are we doing today, lad? I'm doing wonderful. Ready to watch some League of Legends and hopefully a well. We're supposed to maintain a bias or non-bias perspective, but hoping for a Gentle Hearts Gaming revenge victory in this one. Absolutely. Coming from the Risen Champions League here, we are going to be taking on the ISU Varsity Squad with... We'll, we'll get into the stakes a little bit later. First things first, Champion Select on your screen, Blitzcrank, Ash, and Fizz banned out for Gentle Hearts, alongside the Callista, Oriana, and Ivern banned out for ISU. The Azir hover on the first would be Brave Stro and they do indeed lock it in for Blue 1 Azir. No Marksmans, no Jungles, straight mids right off the bat. Yeah, Azir is the strongest champion in mid lane. Uh, you could maybe say Orianna could contest the power of Azir, but it's a reliable pick. You have a strong late game, lots of range, decent lane phase. You can scale quite easily. Overall, the champion is something you can blind pick, and you can't really go wrong with picking it first on B1. Nope, you've got a little bit of everything that you want, so it serves its purpose, the idea of you can't really counterpick it too hard. And I would love to see this. This is likely to be the jungle Nico here. ISU's jungler is very fond of it, so it does break the rel flex a little bit. But maybe there is a world in which their mid has picked it up. But according to my prep and my scouting, I suspect to see the Nico picked up in the jungle role here. Yeah, Nico is a very versatile champion, can be played in the mid lane and the jungle, also could be played support, but that's a little bit on the wilder side. But yeah, if the jungler here for the side of ISU, that being XRM0, has been playing a lot of Nico in the jungle, it's something that certainly can work. It has good gank setup, and you can also play very deceptively with your cloning abilities, with minions, and all that walking through the wave. And so you can find lots of success there and with the Rel pick as well. You already have for ISU a team with crazy good initiation. Absolutely, and it is AOE. You've got great initiation, and you've got the ability to catch up a couple of stragglers in it to try and really kick these fights off on the right foot. However, the answer to big initiation tools, two of the best in the business, Alistair and Poppy, have ejections, evictions, I'm sick of you, get off me, I have enough of your engaged tools to spare. Yeah, it's an excellent response from Gentle Hearts. They do peel away those initiation tools very well. The Pulverize can be a thorn in the side of Rel. The Steadfast Presence from Poppy can stop the crash down as well. And so this is a good response for them. And that Well, Poppy could be flexed into the jungle or the top lane. But we have a Gangplank lock in here on R3 for the side of ISU. And you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier, Sandbag. Tortwig is a Gangplank main. Sort of getting to that point of a gangplank one trick we could say it's interesting that gentle hearts didn't feel the necessity to ban this champion away but it's something that they're going to have to deal with up there in the top lane something that tortwig is very comfortable on yep you also have to throw in the asterisk i think we touched on this last stream of gangplank did get buffs right he's got a little bit of extra utility in that global ultimate a little bit of a cdr knockoff when his ult as well as those Sir silver serpents those parlay stacks meaning just a little bit more upgrading the ults. Granted, that's only at 1,000 and 1,500 Silver Serpents. But at the same time, if the game does start to go late, you see bigger slow on Death's Daughter, more move speed on the raise morale, and it's just a strong champion that just got tapped just a little bit higher in competent hands. That's right. And also the setup here for Gangplank is nice too. Any champion with looks really really good CC, it allows you to land your barrel combinations easier. It's always a great thing to have tons of crowd control on your team composition if you're playing Gangplank. So looking at a Rel and a Nico, you can't really ask for much better than that. People are standing still, you can land those barrel combos. Late game, that could be absolutely devastating depending on who gets locked up in that CC. So you have a team from the side of ISU who has a really devastating team fight given the correct conditions for it. And it's something that Gentle Hearts are going to have to watch out for in this game absolutely need to address those threats they have tools to deal with it but now it's up to making sure that you're always prepared for those i does kind of tickle me a little bit the fact that 
Nico, Rel, both possible junglers, and yet Gentle Hearts go, we don't trust either one of those actually being played. We're still banning more Sejuani, as long with this Rek'Sai going to be banned out. Two champions, well, Rek'Sai getting changes herself. And instead, it is going to be the Vayne locked in for the Marksman of Gentle Hearts into the Zaya. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So Vayne is a short-range champion and can be exploited by the Zaya, especially so if that Rel is going into the support role, which seems like it could likely be the case. It will be a little bit of a rough lane phase for the Vayne, but I like the pick in the terms of the self-peel sense. There's a lot of big engage tools on the side of ISU's composition, but Vayne is a slippery champion that can get away from it. If the flash is used, the tumbles can help you kite away. Condemn can keep threats away from you. And I think because of this, this, ISU with that Vi lock in, they just want as much lockdown as possible because if you let Vayne loose, she can absolutely tear apart these team fights. Combined with an Azir late game, this is going to be a, a game where we see some pretty crazy fights. That's at least my prediction. I certainly would like to back that one up. I expect to see some very chaotic fights where positioning is key. However, we can cheat that a little bit with the Vi champion who says, you must deal with me. W one way or another, I am flying into your backline and you must deal with me. Whether I am followed up on, whether the team is there to help me, whether I'm simply far enough ahead where I can remove your AD carry from the game single-handedly, you must deal with Vi. No Ali, no Poppy, no Azir was going to be helping you out in that way. Yeah, exactly. And so it's going to come down to team fight execution if the follow up on the cease and desist can come through. And then blowing up that vein will be definitely on the priority list for ISU. But the other issue is, and I sort of touched on this a little bit, was the fact that Gentle Hearts have also drafted an Azir who can fill the position as that late game carry. So they have two major threats to deal with. It's not like Gentle Hearts have drafted a composition which solely relies on your AD carry to carry your fights. You can also also bank on this Azir and vice versa. Azir gets assassinated. Vayne can still pop off. So there's two targets to look for here for ISU. So they're going to have to split their resources as best as they possibly can and decide in which way they want to approach these fights because those are two powerful carry champions on the side of Gentle Hearts if given the time and the space to deal their damage will tear up these fights. It just feels like the more traditional version of building a comp, right? You have double carries, then you have double frontline in a lot of ways. Aatrox kind of, he fills that hybridized role where, yes, he is incredibly tough to cut down with the empowered healing, and he's more of a drain tank as opposed to a pure tank, but still fills that role. And then you have the initiation of the Alistar. So you have all of these pillars built up around these carries, Whereas the other side, it feels like the load is more evenly dispersed, right? Nico has damage, Gangplank has damage, Zaya and Vi can also have, I mean Zaya obviously, but they can all contribute to the damage pile, so it's not as simple as remove carries and team falls apart. But it also means that you don't have that inbuilt structure of these defined lines that you want to play with, which often forces you into these more, like you said, kind of chaotic and scrappy fights where if you're simply walking headlong into the Gentle Hearts draft, you might just run out of ways to get on top of those important, important targets. Yeah, and I think that the idea that ISU's composition has damage spread across their whole comp sort of reinforces the front to back play style of the Gentle Hearts team. Really, you're just going to hit whoever's in front of you. There's no key priority targets unless the Zaya is gift wrapped right into the middle of your team, like let's say by a Sharima shuffle or something like that, maybe a flash pulverize and then headbutt insect plays. But yeah, you're really just peeling for your squad. Whoever's in front of you, get rid of them, work your way through the team. This is kind of how Gentle Hearts want to go up about it i think a lot of this game really does bank on this top lane it's very volatile if gangplank can survive the lane phase the aggressiveness of aatrox that can really be something that is pivotal for isu because gangplank is a champion that in the late game can be so powerful with those aoe barrels but on the other hand if the likes of Diesel can shut down the GP on the Aatrox, that can really hinder the team fighting capabilities of this ISU squad. They do actually bank a lot on that GP damage to really fill that void in the top lane since there is no front line there. So I think actually looking at this top lane matchup, it could be something of focus here for both of these junglers since it's really kind of hit or miss. 
Which I'm sure top laners everywhere rejoicing at the fact that we are getting champions who require attention. It's no more just pick Orin into Scion, slap each other over the head with grasp sacks, and then whoever has the better AD carry wins. These are champions that can show their stuff. Aatrox with the sweet spot minigame, Gangplank with the barrel minigame. Small micro moments with these champions can turn into actual game defining plays. So that's, I think you're absolutely right in highlighting it, it's especially because it's a deviation from what felt like a bit of a sink that we were falling into, where it's build tank, play for Drakes, hope your AD carry carries you to the promised lands. Now we have top laners with a little bit more agency. Thank you, Freak. <laughs> yes, a breath of fresh air, sort of breaking free from what we felt was that, like you exactly like you mentioned, Sandbag, that jail of composition. Uh, sort of stalemates there but yeah i think if we talk about junglers i think the aatrox needs more attention than the gangplank gangplank is happy to sit at the turret aatrox does have a little bit more early game power uh but i mean it's outplayable this is why this matchup is so volatile but gangplank's happy to sit under tower farm it out get to 10 cs a minute and then just go blow for blow with aatrox because the scaling is better so i'd like to see if Krakadon can get involved here in this top lane try and punish that play style of the gangplank or maybe it's aggressive it's a very you can play it any type of way that you want so i guess we'll get a taste of that with tortwig's gangplank here in game one Absolutely, and I, I'm excited to see it. A champion that he's put the hours in on, we get to see it to fruition. And so, as a Hearts fan, don't let him scale. Keep him down. He is stuffed on an island. He is a pirate. Make him feel that experience. But also, around the map, we said this was an even spread. There are other things that you need to keep your eyes on. You can't just hammer down the gangplank and hope that he keeps everybody else down. So my attention starts to drift somewhat. As a poppy... Trying to move towards champions with mobility feels real nice. And so bot lane, Vayne not so favored into the Zaya. You might be pulled bot lane towards who, at the end of the day, your carries are not top. So that's the conundrum you find yourself in. Yeah, exactly. So you need to make sure that your Vayne isn't suffering for the attention that you pay in the top lane vi is a champion who can dive very easily zaya can drop tower aggression rel is very tanky lots of crowd control abilities to even pressure this vein while underneath the turret and alistair will do their very best to peel away those threats but you can't forget about your ad carry especially a champion like vein who is so exploitable in the early stages which also sort of begs the question of how how much are the junglers going to spend like spread their time out in terms if we're talking about jungle proximity between all three lanes you got to shut down the gp but you also need to make sure your vein doesn't fall behind in the game as well yeah and so this is where high level jungling efficiency is king if you are simply doing more than your opposition jungler this is the situation where it really shines where you can't simply bj4 sit bot lane try and ignore everything else that's going on in the game. You need to spread your resources. You need to spread your impact on the map. And so junglers start to shine. Playmakers start to shine when you have resources that are more than just these telegraphed one note style teams. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, I think we're actually almost ready to get into the game here. So we've sort yeah, of yes. broken down the... Uh, the goals here for both of these teams and very soon we're going to see it all come to fruition through the game we're getting it all underway we have isu on the red side blue side goes over to the gentle hearts and i think we should just see a five point start to begin this game doesn't seem like with the spread of the players they're going to look for anything crazy here level one nope seems like we have that nice even five point start which does give us a moment to do two things. One, bit of housekeeping. The stakes of this game, win this, make playoffs, lose this. We find ourselves in a bit of a fate is no longer in your hands situation where all sorts of ridiculous possibilities can come to fruition. So at the end of the day, win this, we lock. That's all I'm going to say. Maybe in game two and onwards, we'll have more to say on it. But come up clutch in this series and you are guaranteed playoffs. The second thing I want to call out I do have chat open. Pocus has more eyeballs on him 
than I have seen in a very long time. So this Alistar, if you're talking about playmaking, shoutouts to the uh, the Pocus raid. That I'm looking at a just wall of Pocus, 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 Pocus down there at the bottom of my <laughs> screen. So I appreciate the appreciate the love, you guys. Got the Pocus hype squad in the chat. You love to see it, and you want to win <laughs> if you're gentle hearts because leaving your chances of playoffs up to the decision of other players is definitely not what you want. We have an invade. We do have an invade. Zero is being pushed off his red buff, and that is a zero camp clear so far. And we're talking about efficiency. How about starting two-thirds and at the two-minute mark with your very first camp of the game for Vi? Yeah, it's such an unfortunate situation for junglers. I always sort of cry on the inside seeing this happen because it's so devastating. You're behind in Temple, you're going to be behind in XP and levels, and then you have to also think about the cross map too. Do you go over to the enemy red buff if you are XRM0 and try and steal that away to make up for the loss? Level 2. Level 2. Marching your way in, and Nori Boots can be stunned up by that rel queue. Turning it around, Silver Bolts procked on up. 200 HP left on Motel's health bar means that it's a very nice engage from Pocus. And health bars heavily favoring this blue side bot. XRM0 sitting at half HP. Gonna maybe get involved in this bot lane coming around through the tri bush. Wrap around. Ooh. Trying to find it. The roots does connect on the Pocus. And now the Vi is on route. Flash is possible as the Alistar is able to flash off to the right hand side. Stunning might come through as Tizzle now tries to keep the rel on forwards. Marching back, but it gets Ooh. booped on in. Three man pull, and Pocus turns it around. The Vi has bit off more than she can chew, and Vayne makes her pay. Triple kill to Inori Boob. I thought that was a dead cow, but he had other plans. I think Pocus heard and sort of manifested the power to make that play happen through the chat. You guys should be proud of yourselves. What an excellent... Wait a minute. One, one, one. Auto for auto flashing on the other side of it. Pico is able to pick up the solo kill and cut the hype short, getting something back for ISU. Yep, ISU gets something back in the mid lane. Pocus absolutely pops off in that play. Gets Inori Boob three kills on this vein. Already has a Berserker Grease to Motel's Longsword. This is just a dream start for yourself in the bot lane. The fact that your mid got solo killed, you don't even care at this point. Because really, you are rolling in this game. And it's thanks to Pocus here on that Alistair making it happen. Yeah, counter matchup. Bah. Alistair weak early, blah. They have no interest in hearing any of it as the chains do connect. Infernals onto Tortwig, forcing him to orange. But it's the mana pool you got to look out for. No more parlays. He does have barrels, but be very cautious, GP. You have to be very cautious because Krakadon is here in the top side. We see an engage. Ample. Crashdown not connecting as now T-Tizzle is going to be trying to set this one up. Remember, no flash from earlier means no more rabbits in the hat for the alley. Focus does get cut down by the collective might of the bot lane. And Inori Boob forced to just chip her way on out of there. I think it's smart for XRM0 to play towards the spot lane. Can use the ball breaker. Maybe. Oh. Very careful here. Silver bullets have been procced. That free hit passive turning Vi into a defensive flash from that. Condemn into the walls. Able to get the pin. Trying to tumble her way to safety. One more auto on either one of these carries. But she doesn't have the attack speed yet. Moving our eyes up to the top lane. Diesel. Two versus one for Tortwig. He's going to try and find his way out of this. Heroic charge. Able to get the orange for the oh. max HP. The barrel proc. But it's not enough. Diesel survives, Tortwig dies after flashing, and all of a sudden, eight kills in five minutes, the pace is being pushed. Tortwig dies after flashing and just coming back to lane using the teleport, and look at the wave that Diesel is sitting on. This is still pushing towards that Gentle Hearts tower, and he has teleport. There is so much XP and gold being denied from this gangplank right now. It's already a 10 CS lead for the Aatrox while the lane is still frozen outside of Diesel's turret. This is unfortunate for the GP. Yeah, if we're talking about XRM0, again, hold that thought. Pico is going to be knocked up. Focus here with the roam. Donates it to Arendelle, not swiping it away with the E. And able to answer back for the previous play. Sharima Shuffle, flashing forwards. Beautiful setup with his team incoming. 
This is just textbook GHG Revenge. Their early game is so strong. They're so oppressive. They find angles all over the map, regardless of how the previous plays have gone through. They're really just taking it to the ISU members right now, and they are playing the early game quite well. It's earned themselves a 1,000 gold lead thus far. Absolutely. It has been a bunch of mayhem on either side as we're looking for the flash underneath the turret. She's knocked out of the air. This rail is given no room to breathe. Poke is picking it up with the ignite tick as the solo kill comes out top lane. Everywhere you look, they're just throwing hands. But everywhere you look, it's GHG landing them. It is really just all falling apart right now, especially so on the top side for Tortwig. But it's another great kill and an opening there for Krakadon to get involved in that bot lane, stopping the crash down escape with the steadfast presence. Combine it with the condemn into the wall. There's nowhere for T-Tizzle to go. That's a kill happen. We saw the solo kill on the frozen wave there by Diesel. Excellent opportunity to go look for that because there's no flash on Tortwig burn from the previous gank and you can then push that wave into Tortwig's turret, bounce it, and just run it back, really. And 54 CS to 26 plus a kill. Insane. By incoming. Ah, oh, Pocus is going to be baited into the combination forwards. He has no ult to try and sustain it. We saw the lane gank trying to play right outside the edge of that vision for zero. And unfortunately, Pocus not reading the play does end up falling. And I finally think we have a moment with the recall of the poppy. Just to kind of bring our eyes back into the top lane, perfectly timed, level 7. Just, yeah, that that's about all you need to know. We were lamenting zero start to this game of, oh no, they started you know, a couple of seconds late and down some XP. Looking for the flash play, the Q re-pop, not enough, meaning Pico doesn't come up with the prize. But Fortwig, he's effectively out of this game currently. There, he just doesn't have anything left right now until many many minutes down the line yeah and it's even the, the worst part is too is that if xrm0 tries to bail him out it could just go left if krakadon shows up for a counter gank so he's really just isolated here to his own devices in the top lane the team's gonna say sorry you gotta figure it out for yourself because we're playing for motels right now who's four and one on the zaya has completed the kraken slayer this is your point of strength if you're isu you want to keep making sure that that zaya stays safe because then if you pay attention to the top lane and you try and win out a losing lane, and then uh, Gentle Hearts pounce on the opportunity to shut down the Zaya, then you have pretty much your only hope gone from the map. So uh, this GP going to have to suffer on their own for the moment. Yep, he's on his current, his monk journey. Just suffer in silence and hope to reach enlightenment somewhere down the line here as the season's disconnecting out of the alley. Two fights on two fronts and both of them seeming to be popping off. Krakenon's able to find the mid lane play as we look back. Bop, Poke is down. The ignite is not quite enough thanks to the heal of his marksman. Now and Nori Boob trying to kite this one out. Q not connecting from Rel means that they're liking their chances with the TP incoming. Caught between a rock and a hard place as they have to dive into the blue side jungle. Trying to make their exit so far. And it looks like they have a temporary path to freedom. But Ariandel cutting them off with a pass. Krakadon incoming heroic charge. Not able to get the pin so far. Meaning crash down to safety. Motels with the feather pole. And bot lane will escape with their lives. Yep, fortunately after that in-between turrets play is I'll hold my breath, potential solo kill. Oh, one more Q. Not quite enough. Doesn't have the range on that Q3 as they look for another shelf full. Ariandel onto Pico. Pocus waiting in the wings. Trying to find they do not have that ultimate available on the side of the mid. Pocus doesn't have his flash. This is going to be a long chase and a blast cone to turn it around. He turns around for the stun. Pocus closes the distance and Ariandel gets paid. It's back-to-back -back successful mid lane plays for the Gentle Hearts. The first one I want to mention was really oh, insane no. as we get a Tortwig, top lane dive. You TP in, you get slammed into the wall. He's able to get the barrel chain to turn it around. Diesel's got to watch where he steps. He does manage to survive, but Tortwig chunked and down both sums. Tartwig just can't catch a break, having to burn that flash immediately after teleporting into the lane. You're playing this lane against a champion with such far range like the Aatrox without any sums. It really sucks. But I want to talk about that first mid lane gank. The Shreema shuffle into the heroic charge stun was absolutely gorgeous from Krakadon and Ariandel. And then the next kill as well, Pocus making their way up from the bot lane. This Gentle Hearts team working really well as a unit. And Anoribu only dying once 
even though XRM0 has paid so much attention down in this bot side, things are looking good. Their only goal right now, shut down that Zaya and then snowball like we know that you can do. Right now, Gentle Hearts, they're feeling comfortable. Absolutely. Trying to just make sure that you contain it. You don't have to stop it quite yet. You just contain it. Don't let it keep spreading because everywhere else on the map is going your way. So eventually you can overwhelm it. And at the end of the day, it is still a vein. It is still a champion who's got plenty of fallback tools later on in the game. As long as you're given time and space, motels, they look to punish it early as Pico is going to be knocked against the wall. Ariandel goes on a killing spree. And yet again, Nico is down. But how broken is this combination here from Gentle Hearts? Like the uh, Sharima shuffle into the heroic charge is just so hard for Pico to deal with. As now we see XRM0 getting, getting into involved. The wall. Poke is trying to find the displacement onto the marksman. It's the Nori boob in a two versus one. The Q connecting from the Vi, but Diesel's here to turn the tides. Zero is down. T Tizzle running for the hills. And look at the Poppy waiting to clean it up. Once again, it is going to be a double kill to the Marksman. Diesel impacts the map, and ISU are stopped in their tracks. That was such a beautiful counterplay from Gentle Hearts. They must have known that another play was coming down to the bot side. That's probably why Diesel was pushing the wave top side into the turret rather than freezing. XRM0 goes for the play between turrets. The teleport is in. The collapse is perfect. Krakadon joins on the back end of the play as well. This team is working so well together. Diesel pops World Ender going for the solo. Looking for the solo kill. Remember, no flash from the previous play. And he looks like he's already given this one up, trying to stall as much as he can. But he picks up Tower Aggro due to the trial by fire. And like you said so succinctly, he cannot catch a break this game. No, and especially when you're this far behind, you're playing against such good players, they're not going to let you breathe at any moment. Crack it on. Crack it on. Yeah, that's just a little bit, that was a little bit disrespectful. The standstill, the steadfast presence on the Vault Breaker, and just hit him over the head with the shield. That There's no real interaction, didn't look for a pin, didn't look for a chase, just kind of, uh, no, good luck. Well, when you played this well, you kind of deserve that little bit of BM there. You can kind of... You know, talk your smack. You've played a really good game thus far. Gentle Hearts moving on towards that Chemtech Drake. They're going to secure that one. I think at the current game state, every single dragon after this moment is going to be given the priority of the hearts unless something goes south. Now they invade into the blue buff. Focused on a ward, but it does not matter. Zero still sticks around to claim his blue. T Tizzle might be looking for a crash down of their own. Pico's able to connect that route as now the Alistair is forced to flash away. Emperor's Divide is available, so you can't look to dive into Ariandel without receiving in a swift ejection. But the Condemn finds its mark into the wall. 80 carry down support soon to follow. And Pico is less than lucky on the back of it. He's more than likely going to be forced to flash. Does indeed. And it is hearts everywhere running the map. They run this map. They run the show. Excellent condemn angle there from Inori Boob. Motels does not have enough time to use the Feather Storm because they're locked up by all the crowd control that Gentle Hearts has to offer. Diesel's proxying between turrets, but they're in a 2v1 scenario. 2v1 and has the World Ender and is able to get it off so far. Now he's going to try and turn this around. Torchwig able to get the autos in, trying to turn this around. One versus two, maybe one more oh. power to Q will do it as Diesel's oh. able to get them out play. He's simply too far ahead. Double kill to the Aatrox as the God Killer goes 5-0 in this one. It looks like after the Q3, which did so much damage to XRM0, that Diesel had nothing left in the tank, no pun intended. But then the Gore Drinker came to their rescue, gave Diesel that little bit of extra HP to wait for those Q cooldowns. And then that is all she wrote. The two versus one, nicely played from the Gentle Hearts top laner. This has to just be such a devastating thing for your morale if you are the isu squad everything's falling apart around you you've lost all your tier one turrets you really don't have much left right now everyone playing their part absolutely glorious poke is going to be looking for another here motels has the feather storm immediately pops it early and is forced to flash away emperor's divide knocks the rail on in her she's able to flash and crash down to safety but diesel is here once more 
The tower falls, the bot lane joins it. The map collapses on Motel's head as Diesel simply returns to whence he came. It's like there's nowhere safe for you to stay here if you are ISU. You have to back right down to your tier two turrets. Diesel popping oh, World Ender. He's not done yet. Able to just continue marching forward. World Ender off of cooldown. The barrel slow will make Turtwig escape with his life. But at the end of the day, congratulations. You kept it 04 instead of 05. Diesel is still monstering up in this top lane. Yep, Diesel is an absolute beast here. Has to play a little bit careful because XRM0 is here. Was able to outplay that two versus one in the last time around, but you don't want to push your luck too much because you do have a 1,000 gold bounty on your head. You do not want to give that over to the Gangplank. Going to back away from that two versus one. T-Tizzle also making their way up to the top lane as well. Mm -hmm. Try and find picks. That's the only way to go here for ISU. There's lots of money there for bounties, but realistically... You have to shoot for Hail Mary plays left, right, and center. Otherwise, you're not getting back into this game. Hex flash over the wall here, but the trap has been laid. Cease and desist on an Ori boob. They find the Gangplank ultimate on top of it, but Zero is left alone. Now the team fight's going to be splitting off to this left-hand side. T-Tizzle running for the hills as an Ori boob. Pops the final hour. Able to get the wall pin, the connection. The Gangplank is down. Pop Blossom is not enough behind it. Pico is down. Diesel is godlike, and the heart can do no wrong 24 to 6 and Shelly has been summoned mid lane is not long for this world not long for this world at all the rift herald will not even charge on the tier 2 so we get a full hp Shelly for this tier 3 turret it's dropping at 17 minutes into this game closer to 18 minutes but this is an absolute slaughter they're looking for more arindel oh. misses that emperor's divide in that shrima shuffle but inhibitor drops this is just absolute domination here. It looked like in that fight, the only goal for ISC was to try and take out a Nori boob. They seemed like they were putting all the resources into finishing off the 80 carry of Gentle Hearts, but they couldn't even do that, and they lost all five members. Zero, be careful. Once again, trying to find their camp, but the jungle does not belong to them. Ariandel continuing to give chase. Wait for the slide forwards. The Q will do it. A load of damage out of the single spell. And if you would like to take a quick moment as a PSA to all of you viewers, at the scoreboard, I'd like you to figure out where the, uh, the damage is coming from as Turtwig finds himself once again dove for what feels like the hundredth time in this game. She tizzled down to two thirds HP themselves. I'm looking at 25 stacks, Ferris. 25 stacks on that Medjai's for Ariandel. The Conquering Sands onto XRM0 just absolutely deletes their HP bar. It deletes anyone's HP bar at this point. This is your is He's fully unlocked. Looking. They are going to be trying to find the proxy. Pop Blossom connects on the one. Is able to flash away from Krakadon, but they don't have any more follow-up. Magnet Storm pulls in two. Pocus can tank forever with the flat damage redux. I'm expecting a cowbell to come out here as they do finish it with the barrels. Tortwig now under fire, Infernal Chains yanks in Pico, five for one, and a sacrificial calf is all they lose. This one is ending in a hurry, Ferris. Yeah, they, it looks like they got dinner reservations or something, and they got to make the time because they are speed running this best of three at the moment. They take game number one, 19 minutes and 39 seconds is going to be the game time. 30 to 7 is the kill score. What a massacre here. And this is not something that is out of the ordinary for this Gentle Hearts Gaming Revenge team. We see it all the time, Sandbag. These guys with the lead, they abuse it, and they're quite good at playing from ahead. Absolutely. Once they get that lead, these games just pick up speed, motoring down the hill, and again, trying to lay off the low-hanging fruit, but... Once this war machine gets going and it gets filled with diesel, there's no stopping it. There really is not. And in this game, 807 into what is incredibly stiff competition, credit where it's deserved. This is a scary matchup to say, I'm giving you your one trick. I am giving you your scariest champion. I can beat it. And then pulling out a performance like that who into what is a, a very tall task and making it look simple. Those of you following along would be like, 
Yeah, there's just some random guy they picked up. He just he made them look a step down, which is just an absolutely a testament to him and the team supporting him, giving him that space that he needed. Yeah, it's a statement game from Diesel and for the rest of the squad as well. It felt like everyone was everywhere around the map. You had Diesel teleporting to the bot side. Ariandel was roaming. Krakadon was making fantastic plays in the mid lane. It felt like they were all working together like a hive mind and were all being controlled by the same person. And when this team is playing at their best, they simply look like they're one mind connected. And when that happens, it's really hard to stop them. They take game number one. And we'll be back with game number two momentarily. We're going to cut to a quick break. We'll see if the Gentle Heart squad can continue this momentum into game two. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. And you are clear. <laughs> really insane. Uh, Risen rated us. I was going to say, I was going to shout out Risen. <laughs> oh. Because right before we close. So oh. I guess. I guess. But yeah, that was crazy, man. Holy moly. They are so good. And yeah, and, and these are players to play into who are scary. Like, if you look at these guys, like Tortwig, you look at Pico, you look at some of these players, these are like number 5,000 on the ladder. Tortwig is number 500 on the plank. And they're like, yep, don't care. Absolutely, I'm, di I'm diving you for the fourth time. Uh, you don't get to play the video game, bud. <laughs> like, like, so impressive. Yeah, that's the thing, though, with high elo is, yeah, the players are really talented, but they don't make as many mistakes and they know how to abuse their lead. So even though Tortwig's really talented, there's not a lot that you can do if the Aatrox is playing perfectly. So you can be the best player in the world, but you're still behind. It's sort of like an objective disadvantage. But when there's no mm. real mistakes being made, it, it, things like that can happen. That's why you see it happen sometimes in pro play too, where it's just like if they make it look easy. It's because this player is on fire. Well, what can you really do to come back? Like there's nothing you can do. Once yeah, that exactly. first mistake you... is made, it's just, it's done. And, and that's kind of the beauty of League compared to other esports where it's like, in CSGO or a lot of those other games, Going 5-0 in a pistol round doesn't make your AK do more damage. Right. Like, yeah. whereas in League, you win a pistol, then...